All right, here goes a video on interior and exterior angles um, in a circle. So interior angles are angles where the vertex is somewhere inside the circle. Um, it is not on the circle, it's not outside, it's not even in the center, it's just somewhere floating around inside the circle. Now to find the measure of that, if you look, an interior angle makes two different arcs. It makes one on this side and it makes another one on this side. So to find the measure of the angle, you actually add the two arc measures together and divide it by two. You're just taking the average of the two. Now an exterior angle, the vertex is outside of the circle. Even if it's outside of the circle, it's still going to make two different arcs. You're going to have this far one way out here and the little one that's close. To find the measure of this angle, you subtract the big one and the little one and divide by two and that will give you your measure. So with those, all we're going to do again is some more practice problems. So what I'd like you to do is just see if you can handle these. Just go ahead and pause the video now. I mean, it's the same type of thing. If it's an interior angle, you add the two, divide by two. If it's an exterior, you just subtract the two and divide by two and you're good to go. So give it a try. First one. Here's your interior angle. It is formed by the 40 degree and 80 degree arcs. Add them together and divide by two and you will end up with 60 degrees. That's it. It's just that simple. This X is made up by this angle or that arc and that arc. Now I understand we don't have that other arc so there's two different ways you can do it. First thing you can do is remember that circles add up to 360 degrees. So you could subtract all of these from 360 and find that guy. Or I'm just going to show you a different option. You have this one and this one. So 140 plus 60 is 200 divided by 2 is 100. So you don't even have to find the angle directly. You can find that angle instead and go way back in the day when we learned about a linear pair and say that x is going to be 80 degrees. So really it doesn't matter how you come about the angle. It's, as long as you know your interior angle properties, you should be good to go. Now in this one you're finding x. So you have to remember, to get this, we have to take half of the sum. So if we're going to work backwards, what we need to do is we need to multiply the angle by 2 and set it equal to the sum of the two arcs. So we're just working backwards here. So obviously if this was 40, it came from a sum of 80. So if this is 60, then x has to be 20. Or in this case, like I said, you just multiply the angle by 2, and you get 80 is equal to x plus 60. And even algebraically, no matter which way you work, you're still going to get 20. So if you got that row totally correct, you're good to go on interior angles. So the next row is on exterior angles. The first one is as plain and simple as it can get. You subtract the two angles, or the arcs, so 120 minus 40. And then you're going to divide that by 2, and that's going to give you 40 degrees. Same with this. We're looking for what minus 40 is going to give us 60 after you divide it by 2. So again, this is similar to the last one we did in the row before. You want to multiply the angle by 2 and get 120 and set it equal to big minus the little arc. Add 40 to both sides and we know it has to be 160. Now you can always go back and check to see if that makes sense. So if you get 160, just do 160 minus 40 and you'll get 120 divided by 2 and you get 60 and you can check to see that it equals the angle that the problem is starting with. So that way you are good to go. This next one, we know that circles are 360 degrees. So if we take 360 and subtract 160, we have 200, subtract 120 and we know that we have 80 degrees left for that arc. So if this arc is 80, then we just have to do big arc minus little arc. Divide that by 2, and you will find out that the measure of x is 20 degrees. 
And that's it. That's all you really need to know for interior and exterior angles is how to apply adding 2 and divide by 2 or subtracting the 2 and divide by 2. But of course, we can always come up with some challenging questions. So here are three that are a little bit more of a challenge. Um, the first one is pretty simple. And that's just going to lead you into the shortcut of this one. So if we know this is 260, we know that this guy right here has to be 100. And that's going to just subtract. So 260 minus 100 divided by 2 is going to give us 80 degrees. Okay, now there's a special thing that's going to happen when it's a tangent to tangent. So if you think you see a nice easy pattern, you can go right ahead and find x and y right away, right there. But if not, that one might require a little bit of extra work. Now for this, I want you to remember, you know central angles. And those are equal to the arc. You have inscribed, which is equal to half the arc, and then you also have the interior and exterior. So this little puzzle part problem right here has all four types of angles that we've worked with so far. So what I would like you to do now is pause the video and see if you can answer these two challenge questions. Go ahead and give it a try. So if you figured out that x is going to be 130 degrees, then you're good to go. The secret is, is when you have a tangent tangent, these two are going to add up to 180. Um, that's just the way it's going to work every single time. So if you know that shortcut, you know x is 130, so you know y is going to be 230 degrees. Now if you didn't catch the shortcut, you still could have figured this out. You just have to know that x plus y would equal 360 degrees because it is a circle. And the other thing you would know is y minus x is equal to 100. And that's because big minus little is going to equal the angle times 2 like we talked about earlier. And then you could have just solved this like a system. So you would rearrange that to negative x plus y is equal to 100. And then your x's would cancel. 2y is equal to 460. So y is equal to 230. And then you would subtract that from one eight, or from 360 and find out that x is 130. So it really didn't matter which way you did this. Uh, now let's see if you were able to handle the puzzle problem. Now with puzzles, you never have to find them in order. And sometimes you just start right on the diagram and just work your way around. So first thing that I've mentioned to you before, you should always find the missing arcs. So we know this is 60. We know this is a diameter. So this arc is 120. And we know that this is a diameter, so the other half of the circle means this is going to be 30. Once you find that, you're ready to rock. Angle 1 is a central angle. So angle 1 is going to be equal to the angle, or it's equal to the arc, so it's 120. Angle 2 is also a central angle, so it's equal to the arc. Now angle 3 is going to switch. Angle 3 is now on the circle. Inscribed angles are half the arc. So if angle 3 is intersecting the 60 degree arc, then angle 3 is going to be 30 degrees. And again, I've suggested that you write them on the circle because now look, you have 120 and 30. That's 150 inside of this triangle. So that means angle 4 is also going to be 30 degrees. Okay, so all of that, and we took care of this half of the circle. So now we're going to move over to this side. 5 and 6, you can see our interior angles. Now, you don't have to find both. You can just find one of them. So we see that angle 6 is going to be interior of this 80 and 70 degree arcs. So we would just add 70 and 80 and get 150, divide that by 2, and we would get angle 6 is going to be equal to 75. Now from there, you can just use linear pair. If angle 6 is 75, then this has to be 105. 
So angle 5 is going to be 105 degrees. Now the other way you could have done that is 180 for the big arc that angle 5 is intersecting and the little one 30. So 210 divided by 2 is still going to give you 105. So there's never a set method of how you have to do these. Just use everything you know about math. 7 is on the circle, so it's half of the arc. Notice how 7, the angle is intersecting the diameter, which means half a circle. So angle 7 is going to be 90 degrees, half of 180. And your last one is an exterior angle. Exterior angles are big minus little divided by 2. So if you trace the whole angle, which is something I recommend doing, especially when you have such a large amount of angles in one diagram. The big one is 180. The little one is 30. So 180 minus 30 is going to give you 150. Half of that is going to give you 75 degrees. And there you are again. You're good to go. So if you got all of those, I'm pretty impressed. Nice job, everyone. This is Longo, and I'm out. See you. Bye.